God be served. What a mighty God be served. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God be served. Oh, what a mighty God be served. What a mighty God be served. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And up by before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. Let's all stand and have a word of prayer. Dear God, we ask that your Holy Spirit be upon this service. We ask you, God, that you bless each and every one, that Lord God, that listens to this service tonight. I ask you, God, to bless the singers here, Lord, with a special anointing. And Lord God, and our guitar players, God. And dear Lord, I ask you, God, to bless Ken as he speaks tonight. Let your Holy Spirit be upon him in a great and powerful way. And dear God, I ask you, Lord, Lord God, that you'll touch Larry T Taylor and bless him, God, yes, with the Jesus. things that come before him. That, Lord Jesus, dear God, that you'll just see him through each and everything. And he'll be blessed. He's our sheriff of this county. And we ask you, God, that there be a noting upon him. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name we ask you. And, dear God, have your will with this service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Chaplain Bob, being faithful, you and Wanda, all these years. Started the prison ministry and give a lot of people a chance to minister. Even a TV show right here at 395 and 7th Highway Tabernacle. will be here for a while yet. And praise the Lord. If you don't have a church, 1030 in the morning. Bible study, 930 and 6 o'clock at night. Pastor Terry Wetmore. So be sure to go to church Sunday morning someplace. Hallelujah. We're the good news brothers and that's the good news. Jesus is the head of the church. Nobody's going to dethrone him. Hallelujah. And... Brother Dave Lowe over here, Faith Assembly, going to sing and play a song for us. Praise the Lord. Does a great work. Works in the county jails with Ron Baker. And Larry Howell on that electric pedal steel guitar. Amen. Good to have you, brother. And Les Lawrence from Word of Faith, he's going to sing and play with us again. God bless you. And from City Church, Severo Benavides. Glory to God. And top billing tonight, his name is Jesus of Nazareth. Whoa. All right, on with the program. Here's Brother Baker. All right, praise God. In Galatians, the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Here I am, I'm in another town. It's in a ride. It's in a ride.
ride. Hitching a ride and Jesus picks me up on the way. Amen. You know, we drive so fast down the highway and the freeway now. Sometimes you see somebody standing on the road and you just pass them on by. But there's sometimes when God tells you to stop, the only thing is when you do stop and pick somebody up and, the, and they sit in the back seat, when they tell you Jesus is coming soon, pretty soon you look in the rearview mirror and they're not there anymore. Hello, that happens, huh? Isn't that right, Brother Dave? Got a song for us. Amen. Angels. We are rocking out. We're rocking out. So let's do the Rock of Ages. I like it already. As long as we're rocking out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Their name worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation again, up and proven himself to be faithful. And true. There is no rock, there is no God like God. There is no rock, there is no God like our God. Salvation that cannot be moved. He has proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, yeah, there is no God like God. Rock of ages, Jesus is the rock. Rock of ages, Jesus is the rock. of salvation that cannot be burned. He has proven himself to be faithful and true. Yeah, there is no rock. Yeah, there is no God like our rock of ages. Jesus is the rock. Rock of ages. Amen. Right. A lot of times in positions we go into the prisons and some of the guards say, oh, you're going to rock and roll, huh? I said, that's right. Jesus is the rock and my name's on the roll. Hallelujah. Don't get me upset. Oh, we get excited once in a while, but it keeps my blood moving after open heart surgery. Isn't that right, Terry and Ken? Amen. Huh? Got to keep the going. blood moving. Thank you. All right, Brother Les, what's going on? It's a good idea to keep that blood moving at all times anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's so much better with the blood of Jesus involved. Hallelujah. And you know, with that in mind, I think I'd like to lift the Lord's name on high because he is worthy of all of our praise, and I do that in Galatians. Like it already. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life.
the name of Jesus. Everything happens. Got a request, a little song that we wrote quite a few years ago. There's a lot of songs just like it about Jesus, take my hand, hold my hand, Jesus, but whatever the case may be, I try to get my two bits worth in. Key of Philippians, key of F. Jesus, take my hand. Lead me through the troubled water. Don't give me any more than I can stand Jesus take my pride take all my plans and dreams and schemes and everything else that's hurting me inside make me what I am to be so that everyone will see Oh, more of you and less of me. And Jesus, take my will. You know better what I am to do with my life than I ever will. Make me what I am. So that everyone will see, oh, more of you and less of me. And Jesus, save my soul. Take me to your many mansions and lead me where the peaceful rivers flow. Take me to your many mansions and lead me where the peaceful rivers flow. Yes, Lord, help us, lead us, and guide us. Praise the Lord. Brother Baker, why don't you do one more song before Brother Ken Taylor from Church of Nazarene comes up and breaks the word for us. All right, I got a couple requests for this in C, written by Shorty Halloway. All righty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shorty. I've been traveling down this road with a pain and sorrow. I got all yes. the burdens I can pack. And I've been traveling down this road this way back when.
up your cross And I will set you Yes, that seems to be the theme of the night. Come on, Brother Ken Taylor from Church of the Nazarene to break the word, and he's a volunteer for Dayspring Ministries. I'd like to also welcome Ron Nofsinger and his lovely wife here tonight. Also, Dayspring volunteers. God bless you, Ken, for breaking the word for us. Thank you. Thank you all for having me here this evening. It's always a pleasure when you can gather with in the fellowship of other Christians and celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we get going with the message I brought this evening, I'd like us just to bow our heads for a short prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we're all here this evening, Lord, to celebrate your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we're so thankful for the sacrifice that he made for us. And Father, tonight I'm going to bring a message of, of hope, Lord, of hope that you will rescue our families, Father. And Lord, we take solace in knowing that you're a loving God, a merciful God, and a God that hears our prayers. Father, right now I ask you to, to bless every man, woman, and child in this building, Lord Jesus. I ask that you strengthen us with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask us that you help us to be bold Christians to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through it all, Lord, I ask that you lift our families up and that you claim our families for your own. In your holy name we pray, amen. The Lord has asked me, I believe, and has put a burden on my heart to bring to you tonight a message that, that is dear to me. What I want to talk to you about is a war. A war that's going on today. And I know that that we've heard a lot in the media about the war, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq. And I know that we have men and women in our armed forces that are over there risking their lives so that you and I can have the freedoms and enjoy the freedoms to meet in a place like this and worship the one and true living God. And I thank God for those men and women, and I lift them up in prayer every day. But the war that I want to talk to you about tonight is the spiritual war. It's a war that's raged since the beginning of time, since God threw out Satan from heaven and a third of his angels that rebelled against him. The Bible tells, it about, tells us about it in the book of Genesis. Spiritual war can be a battleground in almost any aspect of your life. Spiritual war can take place in your job, on your work, at your workplace. It can take place when you're in the supermarket. It can take place when you're taking your kids to school. It can take place in your kids' schools. Spiritual war can take place in your mind. Spiritual war is always with us. You see, because since Satan was thrown out of heaven, Satan's been after our souls. He's been after your soul and my soul and our kids' souls and our wife's souls. Satan wants to claim us for his. You see that this, this war is the spiritual war that's been waged every day since the beginning of time. And it's a war for men, women, and children's very souls. Satan and his demons have but one goal, and that is to take as many souls with him as possible into hell. Because he already knows that he's been defeated. He already knows where his final resting place is going to be. And he wants to take as many of us with him as he can. But we can rejoice as Christians in knowing that our God, the only true living God, has already won the war. 
You see, victory was claimed on Calvary over 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, stretched his arms out on a wooden cross and allowed himself to be nailed to a cross, allowed himself to bleed and shed his blood. Through his blood, we have victory. Through his blood, we have the knowledge of knowing that our sins can be forgiven by just the asking. Through his blood, we have the promise of eternity and a life in heaven with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, when God sent his son Jesus to live among us and later to die on a cross for us at Calvary, the victory was ours in Jesus. But still I'm amazed at how many people in this day and age, when war and Rumors of war all around us don't know anything about spiritual war. Don't know anything. They've never heard about spiritual warfare. Our families are under attack today. I believe this with all my heart. Every day I see families torn apart by drugs and alcohol. I see families torn apart by pornography. There are just so many things today to tear families apart. I believe that Satan has made families the number one battlefield. And when I look around the world today and I look and see the the current state of affairs in our country, I truly think that right now it's one that we're losing. But it's one that can be won. It takes every Christian, every man, woman, and child that knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to stand up and be bold in their faith. To pray for their friends, their neighbors, and their enemies. To love one another. Yes, definitely love one another. But to also not compromise the Word of God and the teachings that are in it. To be bold in the proclamation of Jesus Christ. We have kids growing up in our country that don't know Lord Jesus Christ. We have kids growing up in our country that don't have a mother and a father or living in single-family homes. Nobody makes an effort to get them to church. They've never heard about Jesus other than swearing. One of the trends that I've seen personally is that we've seen more and more violent crimes committed by kids today than we've ever seen before. The United States of America right now has more juvenile crime, more juvenile violent crime than any country in the world. And we're supposed to be one nation under God. You see... Satan has declared war on our families. And he's mounted a full force offensive against our families. He's attacking the men, the spiritual leaders of our families. He's attacking them through pornography. He's attacking them through adultery. He's trying to break the family unit down through divorce. He's throwing in drugs and alcohol and the methamphetamine problem that we're experiencing today. The state of Washington is one of the highest states in the nation for drug abuse when it comes to methamphetamine. You see, it's not because God doesn't care about families. It's not because God doesn't love us. It's not because God is weak. It's because God loves us enough that he's given us our own free choice. He's given us the ability to choose to follow Jesus or to follow Satan. And you see, if you don't choose to follow Jesus, you've done the same thing as following Satan. Because there's no middle road. And as husbands and fathers, we're called to be the spiritual leaders of the families. And we need to boldly preach the gospel to our kids. We need to read the Bible to our kids. 
We need to let them know that they need to make a choice. That no choice is making a choice. That when you don't make a choice, you've made a choice for Satan. We need to make that very clear to our kids. You see, because nobody else is going to teach them. And more importantly, that as fathers, God calls us to do that. And if you're the mother in a single parent family, then you have to take on that role. There's no other resource in this world that's more important than our children. Why do you think Satan's attacking our children? Because it's up to us to choose to follow Jesus, Satan has declared war on our families and is mounting an offensive against our families like an all, already defeated warrior. He knows he's defeated. He knows that when Jesus died on the cross, his days were numbered. And I believe he knows that Jesus is coming back soon. Praise God. But it's time for Christians to claim their families again for themselves and for God. You see, we can take heart knowing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has already won the war. We just have to deal with the little battlefields that still exist. Jesus won the war when he became the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, when he stretched his arms out and died on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus has already won the war, and because of his great love for us, we know that as born-again Christians, we have the tools to defeat Satan. We have the tools to win back our families. Paul tells us in the book of Romans, in verses, chapter 8, verse 31, that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The he that is in me is a born-again Christian, is Jesus Christ living in our hearts. The he that is living in the world is Satan and his demons. Paul also tells us that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that I can do everything through him that gives me strength. The him that gives me strength is God Almighty Jesus Christ living in my heart. And if we have Jesus Christ living in our heart, we can do anything that he wills us to do. And I thank God that we have a loving God, a merciful God, that hears our prayers, a prayer-answering God. Paul tells us to pray 